You're here, you can't hear fish. Okay, now you can. Yeah, so welcome to the Catacomb Cup complete breakdown stream. Um, if you are watching the VOD, then make sure to skip ahead like 10 minutes-ish, because we usually just chat for that long to just wait for viewers to come in. I'm going to send out the tweet, the ex incredibly long tweet that I wrote now. Mm -hmm. And I might also tag um, the Discord. The nice thing about this calm day is uh, I can finally transfer some of these um, these slow pokes that I've been saving. Do we get like extra candy for it? Transfer candy? No, I just don't. What am I saving Galarian slow pokes for now? For trading? It's like not rare anymore. Yeah, right. I uh, I got enough to to uh, level fifty a slowpoke today, which is good. Not something that's that what happens. I told you to do. Yeah, that's what. I, did you use the megas or what? How did you do it? Um, you have to be level three mega oh, to there's... get the uh, to get the boost right to get to get the chance. No, level two, level two also boost, but it's a lesser chance. Lesser, yeah. Um. So I was I I um I mega evolved a swamp it for the first time. So I was level one. Yeah. Hey, it's 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 an improvement. Yeah. So basically, level two is like it, once you get to level three, you're basically getting one XL per Pokemon you catch. Yeah. Right. Which is good because you catch but like. A thousand. You catch a lot. Yeah. And then on calm days, so it's usually boosted XL rates, right? Mm -hmm. So um like like for instance for um for a uh, Lanoon, the Zigzagoon, I have uh, like twenty two hundred XL candy. So All right. not that I'm ever gonna need that much, but that was mainly just from the calm day and like Mega Lanoon. Let's go. Master League. Sure. I mean, you could excel an obstacle, I guess, if you wanted to, but... You remind me, I need to... I need to Mega Evolve some stuff here. What do you need to Mega Evolve? Just cycle through my Megas. Okay. So they they have a cooldown, right? Yeah, yeah. So you just want so to make every... sure you've got one going. Can you just have one at a time? Well, what you do is, uh, every once your cooldown is done... Um, you just like go through and you basically mega evolve them all mm. for free or whatever. And then, um, and then you, if you do that over time, eventually you'll just like work up to mega three quicker. So, you, so you can't have more than one mega at a, at a time? No. Okay. You cannot have more than one mega, but I have quite a few mega level threes. So I have like, uh, Gengar, Abomasnow, Beedrill, Pidgeot, Slowbro. Um, Charizard, Venusaur. So I have quite a few typings. Yeah. Gyarados that I can utilize. Um, yeah, they're pretty handy for different events and stuff, depending. Welcome, Sterny and Lily Bear. You don't have to make graphics for the for the uh, factions. I think that's way too much work. I mean, if you want to, that's fine. But. <laughs> That's like that doing it for three factions is a lot of work. And also I haven't done like a five minute version as well, so you'd have to watch the the like two hour long breakdowns. Hugo Bo is here, so we got to, uh, we got all of the Pallet Town factions here. Let me let me go over to the faction screen here. Is what are you guys in open? Yeah, uh the silver is in iron. The rest are in open. Hello, Town Ruby. Okay, let's see the team. Oh, he did submit a team. I did end up submitting a team. It just and why is that? Uh, because apparently last time we got a warning. Chat? Apparently last time I didn't submit a team, we got a warning. So I'm like, well, if I'm actually like, if there's a chance that I might, I might actually cause more harm to the team by not submitting a team, then then good. Then I might just. Submit something and cop the the O three. They, Kyogre. You know, no, maybe their Pokemon aren't level fifty. Maybe. Opium. You know what? 
that didn't actually occur to me. Because you guys, no offense, but you guys are in open, right? So, yeah. you know, you yeah. never know. You never know. That's a good point. Like, I would just, like, play it out. Like, I would assume yours are at least level 40. They are level 40, Maybe. yeah. But I also, like, literally did not put any effort into, like, making a balanced team or anything. These are just six of the, like, 15 Pokemon that I have built. I mean, man, it looks pretty good, other than the Kyogre. Okay. can put in some work. I got nothing against um, the Kyogre. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, yeah, dude. What are we talking about? I got... Yeah, Dragon Eye would beat it. Yeah. Um, okay, so Maybe. now now I want to start doing Sims. Like, cause it could a level 40 Dragon Eye beat a level 50 Kyogre? Probably. Here. I guess. Michael, welcome yeah, in. As long as you don't get blizzarded. Yeah. You should be fine. Yeah. Oh, here, I'll, I'll tell you my Mega 3s, okay? Uh-huh. Felix, uh -huh. Slowbro, uh -huh. Bomb of Snow, uh -huh. and then the rest I've already said, so. Okay. Steelix was the one I forgot. That's a good one. Oh, is that is that Mega released yet? I didn't yeah. realize. It's a ground. It's a, also pretty good in... Um, so our Master League Specialist got a 3-0 this week, a Shoe Star. Um, he was running, um, Sizar. Like, I can show you his team, actually. Mm -hmm. Um, he had a really good team this week. So we're currently up 8-4. Nice. We did have one, um, 3-0 uh, against platinum, us. Right? Pardon? Platinum? Yeah, Platinum. Yeah. So we did have one 3-0 against us. It was just pretty unfortunate. Like, the opponent played really well, and mm -hmm. we had some pretty bad alignments, so it happens sometimes. Mm -hmm. But then we 3 0 twice, and then we got a 2 1. So we're, we're looking okay. 2 3 0 is always good, right? So, yeah, shit, yeah. Um, so this is a Mega Sizer. was really good for us this week. This thing is really yeah. good. I, I have been doing really well this season in Gym Breakers. So um, uh, a, a, a lot of my opponents have been. I've, I've been 3 0 them. Um, I have lost, I think, like two matchups, two or three. But um, yeah, I've, I've been I want to see what a lot of sweeps. Insane team! Oh, Lily Bear got the win. Pog, let's yeah. go. Go Lily. What's a Macargo too? Lily Bear, stop! Look at the team: Deoxys, Tyrant, Pelipper. Where the hell's the Macargo going? Tell me. Um, she put Rock Throw on it. Does that um, change your thoughts on anything? I like the Superior. I, lo I love Superior. Yeah. It's my fave. Um, like, er, Superior looks really good against this guy's team, mm. other than the... Or this person's team, other than the Jump Bluff. Yeah, which yeah. Which I also really like in this meta. I, um, Shifu um, would be to Superior, wouldn't it? Um, if you're running Aerial Ace, I guess it's a little better for you. It's close. It's yeah. close. Yeah. That's good. Got the 2-1 there. Oh, Kaza. <laughs> <laughs> like it. Uh, so um, there was uh, a gentleman called Michael Raber who um, said hello on YouTube, and I said hi, as if we knew them, but I didn't recognize the name. But they just uh, clarified that it's Casa de Cubo. Now this is a very spicy open Grey league team. Um, three water types is interesting. Um, you know what? Um, Ghost is is very good, so I I trust him. <laughs> non Shadow Dragonair. Uh, I don't know about that. We we we, we support the Shadow yeah, Dragonair. Yeah, right well, here. people would have said that about my non Shadow Charizard. People did say that about my non Shadow Charizard. Um, Advantages still think and disadvantages. You need a shadow, but, um, let's see. So. The problem I see here is uh, he's going to bring this G-Fist a lot. You have things against it, but uh, I think um, Skarmory looks really good, right? Pretty pretty solid. Yeah. yeah. It can basically is that a beat... Yeah. yeah. It, it, Skarmory can basically handle everything except um, G-Fist. Yeah. So, so you're, you're um, starting to play the... the, uh, the dodge the, dodge the G-Fist, basically. Yeah, my guess is they probably play some sort of a game. They probably do something where they try to like bait out a bait out the Skarmory and like lead the Jeevisk or something. Yeah, but you never know. People can run sometimes some weird yeah. weird lines. So. It is open. 
Anything can happen in open. It's like early. Doesn't matter. <laughs> it's like early rank. Uh, go back. Oh, league. anything can happen like, in yeah. platinum, dude. People. Oh yeah. People just run. People just run whatever the fuck they want, dude. Like, if they get lucky and they don't get like a bad lead, then it's fine, right? Yeah. You you see people there all the time. Sometimes it's sometimes it's legit, just like um, negligence, like stupidity, and other times and it's they just still get they don't lead. give a fuck. Well, they're like, after the battle starts, they're okay. Like, let's say, like, your best Pokemon is like Charizard. And yeah. then they're like, okay, I'm going to run like Chestnut lead and like Registeel in the back. And then, you know, and then the Charizard's in the back. So mm. they end up getting like alignment on like mm. a water type or something, right? Mm. And then after, when the battle starts, they're, they might be going, oh shit, I hope he doesn't lead the, the Charizard. Or they could also be thinking, like, this team's perfect. Like I can beat anything, mm. so you you never know with these people. They're <laughs> they're crazy. All right, um, I am going to grab one of my um, world famous tiny bottles of soda water, which has been cooling in the fridge, and then happy to get started. <clears throat> All right, hurry up. <laughs> Could you please look at my matchup? Any tips for uh? I can't even read that. Something in Catacomb for Factions. What team are you on, Cassidy Cubone? Are you on one of the Pallet Town team? I don't even know where you are. What are you, North America open? Also, Immortal Tomato apparently never heard of Barbarical. Ooh, what okay. team is Cassidy Cuba on, on? I have no idea. Yeah, you you have to send us a link to your you, you have to like DM it to me or Lyle, a link to your faction. Athena got a three zero here. Interesting. Camel got clapped two one. What? Uh, I mean, it wasn't a two one. It was a two nothing. Uh, so um, it should say zero if it was a team non-submission. Well, and you can see a, a team for. Oh, was Camo, it? So. He probably just hasn't submitted his score yet. That's yeah, fine. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, this is gonna be tight. Two one, two one, two one, two one. See, that's the crazy thing about three O's, right? Like, you guys mm. lost one, two, three matchups so far. Yeah. And you won two, but technically you're winning. Yeah. You're up eight to seven. Yeah, because right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Assuming so have... that was a, a one-two, it might be a dispute. So you have two could... matchups left, and then um, see how it goes. What did he say? Round table. Oh, he's on a round table team. Uh, the round table chat up. That would be. Huh? The round table chat up. You know the podcast. That the Discord is that what he sent me? Oh, uh, did, did he send the link to you? I have no idea. That's fine. <laughs> I'm gonna assume they're in open. Um, I couldn't find them. Still looking. Still looking. Ooh. Couldn't find him. Yo, Trey's. Look at Trey's. They're freaking destroying these guys right now. Matthew Breaker got a 3 0. Yeah. Smiley got a 2 1. Pro Shiny Hunter, 3 0. The Agitator got 3 0. Oh, shit. I know this guy. Who? Um, a humble break. Oh, it is RT COVID. Nice. Got it. Oops. Oh, this one? The RT Corviknights? Yeah. Well, you guys are currently losing 11 to 0. <laughs> uh, which is unfortunate. Um, this is actually Matthew Breaker's old team. The RT Corviknights? Team Flareon. No, Team Flareon. All oh, right. Um, um, let me see here. What do you got going on here, Cassidy Cubone? Okay, and and this is uh, catacomb, so that's awesome. Uh, yeah, it's kind of 
should we should we start talking about individual picks and then we'll get into like a team analysis or should we just start with the analysis we can just look at this quickly it won't mm. take long um i mean i like your sableye a lot but you, he has the mandibuzz and also chestnut can be tricky for sableye because you guys pace at the same times and they do resist foul play right but the Shadow Claws in general do quite a bit to Chestnut, so it's like still pretty even. Like mm. even if Chestnut wins that matchup, mm. it's just like like easy farm. Um, you're uh, gonna have you're a little soft to the Mandibuzz. Like my guess is they bring Air Slash Mandy. Um, so how are you yeah. gonna beat the Mandibuzz? Um, I I like the. Tyrant. Oh uh, yeah, we'll solve the Mandibuzz problem first. Um, well, how does the Abomasnow well, Mandy match up to? If they're running Air Slash, then Tyrant does pretty well there because it's a Rock type, right? The Tyrant just has like some. The Frost Last matchup is kind of like energy dependent, and yeah. because you also are a Dragon type, so like it yeah. can get a little like sus, uh, especially if you've got Chip first. They could like farm you down. Um, yeah, I do like Obama Snow, but they have also some good things for it. So, wins with Snow. Uh, do you think all the Catacomb Cup Mandy should be running Air Slash, or? I think for his team particularly. Because the... he has Umbreon, Chestnut, and Obama Snow. Um, you kind of want, like, you need Air Slash to win the Umbreon matchup, right? Hmm. So, and, like, it will, Air Slash will help you a lot versus Chestnut and Obama Snow. So, I think, yeah, I think Samurott looks pretty good for you, too, other than the Galv and the Chestnut. So, um, you could probably pair Samurott and Sableye together. And then you just want something else that can handle the Galv, like, and the Frostlass. So, maybe, like, Tyrant, Sableye, Samurott is, like, a pretty decent team for you. Something like that. Yeah, I think you have play. It does look a little tricky. It might be a slightly alignment dependent. Is what I'm noticing about Catacomb is it does seem a little more alignment dependent, depend mm -hmm. based on your team build up. Mm -hmm. But I I'm still yeah, not sure. sure yet. Yeah, I, I think you'll be okay. Do you find Chestnuts uh, wanting to run Vine Whip or Smackdown in this meta? Smackdown would be great for your Frostlass, Galvantula, Mandy. I think Vine Whip's fine. Because, like, again, Frostlass is similar to Sableye, where you just need you just need a, like, a slight energy lead, and then you outpace the Frostlass mm. anyways, right? So, um... I, Smackdown's just really slow. I don't know. It, it, I guess if you have it in the right spot, it's okay, but... Well, with um, Vine Whip, you've got literally nothing against Galv. You still, like, believe me, the Galv matchup is fine. With you uh, Vine Whip Frenzy Plant? Yeah, 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 it's fine. You, bro, have you seen how much a Frenzy Plant does to a Galv? I you don't die, find but out. Lunge, is, Lunge is neutral, right? You're um, yeah. a fighting type. Yeah. And you resist Volt Switch. It's actually, like, a very neutral matchup. Okay. That's good to know. They always shield the first one because they they want to shield before they get the debuff, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But they yeah. they beat you to the lunge. But they still shield. Yeah, but they still shield them. because they want to get some more lunges off. But, like, look at you win that. Yeah, so even after the debuff, you're... Even after double debuff, it's still taking two Frenzy Plants to KO. Yeah. No, it's not a bad matchup. And, like, what I, what I tend to do sometimes if I'm in that matchup is, like... You can like you can like try to catch a lunge on something and like store some extra energy for later too. Yeah. Because then you reset your debuff and mm. then you have some energy. Because the volt switches are not doing much at, at all to you. Yeah. It's not a bad matchup. I think Gal's really good in this in this meta. Um, because there's not a lot that there's not a lot that can like actually like completely destroy it. Mainly just like Tyrant. There's not many dragon 
in this meta. There's yeah. some rock types. Like, you could run, like, I guess, rock throwers, you know? But and, it just, like... Mm -hmm. And the more shields you've got, the better that matchup is against Frostlass, because, like, those Vault Switches against Frostlass, uh, that, like, that is some nice farm. Like, yeah. yeah. I would suggest going straight Discharge against Frostlass, because, like, if they... If they, because they actually survive the discharge, um, but so it puts them some, in farm range, right? Yeah, but if they no shield a lunge, then you have to double shield, and it's like it gets kind of awkward, right? Mm -hmm. Like we can check that match up here, um, Galv, Frostlass. So it says here Galv loses. But it's like very close. Like Ow. you see, stick it down to six HP. Because the discharge only does forty percent, and avalanche does uh, almost seventy. Huh. But you like destroy them in the two shield. But it says you lose the two shield. I don't know. In my experience, it's been well, it's that, much that's better. That's what I was saying. Right oh wait, no, you're <laughs> losing the two shields as the gal. Wow. Yeah, it's interesting. That's probably a timing thing. Because, um, I imagine... I think, it's, I think if you just, like, if they switch into you, you're probably fine. Like, Yeah, right. Yeah. You're still losing the ones. It's it's because they slightly outpace you. That's the reason. Because it's it's 665, right? And yeah. you need, um... You but... need, what is it, 4, 8, 12 turns? So you pace at the same time. Yeah. But, but... their third you know, avalanche you know, is one quicker I, in those sims, I bet you, like, they're, you're throwing the first lunge, letting them get another powder snow, which means they, like, that allows you to outpace to the the second avalanche. Are you, you what, what you're you want them to throw in CMP? That would probably, that would probably put it in Galp's favor, yeah. They should still outpace you to the third avalanche, right? Yeah, but in those sims, they they don't even need the third avalanche. They're outpacing to the second avalanche. No, this is a two shield. They they get the three avalanche. Yeah, what's happening in the one shields as well? No, they <sighs> survive the discharge. Get out of here. So go, CMP. Go back to bed. Would it matter? Okay, <laughs> it's still fine for yeah, Galv. Yeah. Like honestly. Um, Anytime you can get a Frostlass that low, it's it's fine. Frostlass actually was a bit of a problem for us yesterday mm -hmm. um, because we had Grimer, not Umbreon. I think mm -hmm. you like Umbreon's really good because it helps deal with Frostlass mm -hmm. pretty well. Um, or Sableye. Like this guy, Castle, the Cubone, he has Umbreon and Sableye. Like I think their Frostlass is like going to be really hard to bring. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's very it's going to be very tricky to bring. So. Mm -hmm. I think again they're gonna probably rely on like a Galv Mandibuzz core if I was if I was Rockford. It seems like like pretty solid for them, so uh, yeah. Hmm. What about the And I honestly don't yeah. hate the Lycan Rock either. You don't hate the Lycan Rock? On Rockford's side? Well what do you yeah, like? Yeah, because he's it? got Tyrant, a bomb snow, Umbreon, it can do well there. And, um, like, Samurott, unless they're running Waterfall, like, you can... Those counters are going to be doing a lot, and you can start Psychic Fanging them, right? Like, so... I mean, you get one shot by Hydro, don't get me wrong, uh -huh. but there's no fast move pressure there, at least, so... Um, and th that Stone Edge, dude, does so much. <laughs> like, yeah, I bet you it does, like, 60% at least to, uh... To a, um... Sableye. Sableye? All right, Hound. We'll go the un You go 60%. That's your guess. What are you thinking? Um, I'll take the... I'll take the... Overs on 60%. I think that's a good choice. 64%. Hey. It does a lot. It does a lot. And counter's only single resisted, right? Yep. So it barely doesn't... With a bait... Like, like, look at here with the counters. 
you're basically countering it in the stone edge range. Mm -hmm. So like this, this bait is like very effective, right? Mm -hmm. If you, if they counter swap, you can win that with a bait. Yeah. It's not bad. Like, and they're double baiting in the two shield, which is very tricky to pull off, but I've seen it done. Yeah. If you really want switch, if you really want switch, right? Uh, but and then, that's saying one turn of difference can... Yeah, they're, they're counter-swapping you, right? Yeah. yeah. So like, let's say you safe swap the Lycanroc. Yeah. Which I wouldn't advise, because I think it would get completely destroyed by the Chestnut, but I feel like Chestnut is kind of hard for us to for him to bring, so mm. maybe it's the play. Lycanroc still wins that in the two shield, apparently, but that's also them... But it still doesn't matter. The second phase would have killed anyways. So they can they can just two shield their way through a, a chestnut. I guess so yeah, and so what I'm seeing here Not, is that the oh, they uh, need the one lead. They need the one lead. Okay, yep, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so you did you sim that without any charge moves on chestnut? Uh no, oh. but um Why they're not the... throwing because if they if they let them sneak one, then uh they get to the third poison second thing. Huh. Okay, interesting. I mean, you still win. It's kind of a closer matchup yeah, than I expected. Yeah. Because Psychic Fangs is super effective, right? It does. Uh, it does like almost thirty-five percent. And the counters. How much are they doing? Um, about five yeah, percent. Five percent. That's huge. So, Vine Whips are doing a lot, but uh, you get there in five for Psychic Fangs, right? So mm -hmm. it's pretty good, actually. Like a rock seems interesting. <laughs> Have to consider that. I mean, I'm playing Ultra League, so what do I care about Lycanroc? Like but you know, <clears throat> like yeah, it does seem interesting. Right, so, so this meta is is like a Frostlass meta again. Right? Yeah, mo surprise. most metas that have Frostlass in it are Frostlass metas, but. Probably my favorite counter to the Frostlass is this, the Barbarical. Yeah. <clears throat> this wasn't the one where Grass Knot was viable, right? No, there was another Sylph Meta. Want, I think you want Cross yeah. Um, well, so, uh, There was another Sylph Meta where a lot of people were running Cross Chop Grass Knot. And that's because like, it was like literally the only viable Grass damage in the meta. So, like, the, there were teams running triple water. Like, a lot of teams were running triple water. And then suddenly they would run into a Grass Knot Barbarical and, and collapse. I forget which meta that was. Do you remember it? Mm, I think that was... Um, let me see here. I think... Uh, I know which one you're talking about. Let me see here. What is this? Uh, I forget the name of it right now. It mm. was an ice meta, right? It was a a meta with a lot of waters in it, a lot of viable waters. Um, I think um, I think it was this one, glacial cup. Glacial. I think that's the one you're talking about. It was about. probably. Hmm, well, I mean, you've only got one water on your team in those glacial cups. Um, I, I remember Polar. I was running double it. grass. Though. No, no, I think it was this one. This Barbarical was good in this cut. Um, Barbarical here. Also, it was good in... I think Barbarical was also decent in... Um, Guardian Cup, if I remember correctly. Okay. Basically, I'm like a Gen 1-er. Like, I, I vividly remember all every detail of the first season, and then all the other seasons just kind of blend into each other for me. Only issue I have with Barbarical, and, I mean, you you don't seem to have problems with this sometimes, is, like, look, at if you if you turn off baiting, you still mm -hmm. lose to Frostlass. Uh, so why why do you say I don't have a problem with it? Because you're always like, I don't mind bait dependent Pokemon. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. what you, that's your famous line. I and am famous I story, just, yeah. I'm just like a like sure okay if you if you have energy for sure it's fine, but <clears throat> it just scares me a little bit that I have to friggin' 
throw a cross chop at a ghost type in order to win a matchup, you know? So yeah, uh, l- let me let me nuance that uh, that stance a little bit. Um, I do think that is a bad thing that um, like be- because you bring a barbarical in against a frost last expecting that's a win, and then to to know that it doesn't win unless you bait once that is a, a problem that uh, needs to be needs to be considered. I the reason I say that I don't mind bait dependent Pokemon is because sometimes those baits allow you to win against the things that you don't expect or that others don't expect you to win okay it says here if you have a really good ranked barbarical <clears throat> you can survive the the avalanche and get the two stone edges so the shadow ball you mean yeah sorry the shadow ball yeah it it looks pretty good but like i'm starting to wonder like maybe it's not as good as it as it seems. Well, I mean, it's only score scored ninety five and a half. So as far as yeah. like a top Pokemon goes, that's not huge. See, like the consistency is seventy five point two. Yeah. So I'm not actually sure that it's as good as as the rankings say. Manabus has a hundred percent consistency here. Galv has a hundred. See, that's what I'm saying. Galv, <clears throat> I think, is very good. Sea King, interesting. Beats Barbarical, beats Jump Bluff. I mean, Sea King could just be consistently up. bad. Yo, you shut your mouth, okay? Sea <laughs> King, I don't think is that low. Yeah, it's rank 33, 85 score. The water type with the poison jam- damage does seem interesting. Um. Against Alolan Graveler, they can just go straight. Oh no, hang on. Barbarical wins the one there. I was going to say that um, Graveler's just going straight Rock Blast. So, like, how much would you need to be able to. I reckon you are winning. You are just winning CMP there. So, I think if they swap in. I imagine if they swap in, like, halfway through a Volt Switch. Then mm-hmm. they're gonna get to that Stone Edge to KO. I wonder if it works like this. If I give them eight energy, depends on like I guess your opponent's previous teams that he's been running and everything. Yeah, that didn't but happen. um, but like uh, the that's the Graveler seems like because like Chestnut looks pretty good. The Graveler seems like um. Yeah, it's a big problem against the Chestnut. But then you've got, like, it's such a good counter to Frostlass, and it's a great counter to Beedrill as well. Yeah, actually, great even counter Bucca, to Buzz. I think brought a Beedrill. Yeah, it looks good. It's yeah. just, like, I try my best to build my team around things that are a little more flexible if possible. Mm. Mm. Like, you can't always do that. But, yeah, like, of course. Okay. But, um, yeah, I think it's still fine. Um, Samrocks rank pretty good here. Um, Skunk Tank I like a lot. We used Grimer this week. I didn't like it as much. I think Skunk Tank's better. I like the fact that it has Flamethrower so that it can hit, um, it can hit back against, like, uh, other Dark Poisons as well. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't know why this Pokemon is always ranked so high. Snowy Castle. What's its bulk like? It's okay. 1980. It's decent. Just give it any other move other than Blizzard. Please. <laughs> uh, Please. I meant if it's ranked this high with no coverage moves, then I imagine giving it a coverage move would make it pretty darn good. Like, a bit too much. All cast forms have some sort of coverage move. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's just annoying. Like, give it something, you know? I think do all the cast forms learn the same thing? It looks like they do. They all have the same stats. They all learn the same moves. Ha! Got it. 
So <laughs> I uh, I made the bar in the barbarical versus um a and graveler matchup. I made the barbarical wait two turns to simulate it coming into the matchup halfway through a vault switch, and that did make the difference. Like it allowed the graveler to get to the stoneish to go. Also, shout out to yeah, as the Pokeball turns. Who's uh, just jumped in on YouTube? Give it Hyper Beam. Snowy cast form with Hyper Beam. Yeah, I'm looking here. Um, well, that's not really coverage. Oh, it's better than ice. Better than all ice moves. It has Water Pulse, which is probably like what Niantic would give it. <laughs> Thunder is okay, I guess. Um, maybe there's Shadow Ball. There you go. Just give it Shadow Ball. Easy. Far out. Right? Can you imagine if uh, normal cast form had Shadow Ball? Hex Shadow Ball. It would be better. It would, uh, everything's better, better with Shadow Ball. Basically. Here. Give Shadow Swamp at Shadow Ball. Um... Yeah, the the ground water is like a really good I was kidding about that. <laughs> it would be tricky. Like I think there would definitely be such scenarios where you'd want it, but it'd be pretty good against like uh like your Altarias and stuff. Yeah, but basically Altaria is like the only thing that it gets walled by, right? No. It's not It's the just only a dragon flying. Man, imagine the Trevenant matchup. Well, they still have pace use. So. They do, but like, you can you can one shot them in an end game scenario. Are we doing catacomb? Yeah. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Shadow ball cast frame. Let's see how good it is. It's actually worse according to this. <laughs> wow. You pick up Frostloss, but you lose to Drapion, Quillfish, Raticate, Sableye, Soda Widow, and Umbreon. Well, now so there I'm... you go. Shadow Ball's not all it's cracked up to be. And now I'm going to check out Shadow Swamp it with Shadow Ball. Thank you, Uncle Beast, that I saw the BTW yeah, we part did see trace, that. I mean, you know, no offense, but like, you know, you're basically beating around a sack of potatoes, but, uh, wow. you know, good, jo Savage, good job. Lyle. Savage and unnecessary. I just tell it like it is, okay? That's it. Why is that not? Shadow, Shadow Bone. Hello? I think, yeah, I saw it right here. And part does. It's close. Um, looks like Instinct Five, Leader eight. Park got the, the win here. Clifford Merck got a 3-0. He's actually doing pretty well. It was a very spicy team in Arcana. Gracie got 3 0 Ooh, that's rough. That is that is rough. Um So Uh that this is an interesting thing to note. A discharge does 74% to a barbarical. Which means that if they try and snipe you with a loaded discharge, mm -hmm. then you've got a reasonable chance of surviving if if you got high enough HP. But a stone edge just absolutely splatters it. Mm -hmm. Um and I think they get to the stone edge and the discharge at the same time from even energy. I Is did that... like Barbarical, um In the team that I had built, um, I had a Barbarico. I'm trying to remember what I was using it for. It's good. It's really good into like Umbreon and stuff like that, right? That's where it shines, I think. Oh, uh, hang on, no. The Garventula does outpace it. Um, sorry, yeah, yeah what was that? kind of insane. Yeah. I think, um, Barbarico is really good against like Umbreon and stuff. So, uh, so even I'm around, obviously, after rank really good, even after a lunge, 
you your stoner is still taking him all the way out. So this is crazy. Our Umbreon actually beats Galf here. Shooting the second lunge, that's weird. Yeah, right. That's amazing. Three forty three. Do you have to last resort here though? Probably. No. No. So why are they last resorting then? BM. <laughs> PV Pokes BMing. <laughs> um, but I think Galv should win the two shields. No, it says it loses the two shields. It's crazy. Surely this is another BM, right? So if you successfully bait the Galv with the Barbarical, you win the one shield. Yep. Which is crazy. Yeah. It's like, if it's a one shield scenario, that's really nice. Mm. Um, I always hate those scenarios when the opponent has two shield. Yeah. Because they're likely to just double shield and like farm you down. Yeah. And then, um, like, as we saw already in this meta, like a Galv with like 100 energy and basically full health since... It's just going to take you out. <laughs> it's going to be tough to deal with, right? Yeah. You, there's... Like, let's just, like, that's the thing about Galv is, like, if you look at the meta, like, what resists it? Ground, right? Okay, we have Pillow Swine, which even then, two lunges probably KO this thing, right? Graveler? Onyx? I don't know. Geodude? Like, there's not a lot of things that do well there. There's not a lot of good ground types, really. I thought, I thought I think you said Onyx is good in any meta. Well, it's ranked 68. Let's see, what does it beat? Mandibuzz? Aridos? Beedrill? Galf? Oh, look at that. Beats Galf. Easy. <laughs> Loses to Frostlass. How, how does a rock thrower only get 595 against Galf? A ground type rock thrower. Galf's busted. <laughs> I think that's just the meta. You're not going to get Onyx there. Oh, no, that is Onyx here. Um, well, well, they have Rock Slide Stone Edge. Maybe you want Sand Tomb for Scalp, right? Sand Tomb, yeah. You got it. Let's see here. That's crazy. Because Lunge does uh, 30%. They should best buddy their onyx. <laughs> ah, there we go. It's doing 32 damage, like, and a Volt Switch still does 3 damage, which is wow. kind of crazy. But, I mean, as you can see, it's still pretty good for onyx. You just rock throw it down, basically, from any health <laughs> ring. Tomato, we're talking about Catacomb Cup. But yeah, it's pretty good. It's weird. You survived two lunges. Oh, wait. Are they not shielding? Oh, that's why. They're not shielding. Yeah, okay. So, that's Onyx doesn't weird. shield in the in the one shield for some reason. <laughs> I mean, that's just got to be a coding thing. It doesn't need to because it's so freaking thick. Is Shadow good for Lol and Luck? Uh, that is a good question. We don't know yet. Uh, although Shadows aren't eligible in Catacombs, so it doesn't affect this meta. But um, another thing, so if you look at Dragons, Zylus obviously doesn't mm. do very well against Galv. Well, it does okay, I mean, but it, yeah, it do okay. takes super effective damage, right? Um, Executor. I'm looking for things that resist Electric, right? Mm-hmm. So Tyrant is basically one of the best answers for Galv in the meta. Yeah. Which is why I think people are running it quite a bit. Like, a Lunge does about half, but a Dragon Tail does about 11%. So, and an Ancient Power does 82% to a Galv. So it's really good. I think Tyrant's really strong, for sure. Mm. Um, it can beat Frostlass, but <laughs> it's a very close matchup. Like, even the two shield, it technically wins just by farming down. 
but you can see like how low it gets, right? So like the thing is, if you just chip this at all going into the matchup, let's mm -hmm. say it has like one, 100 health, which is still in the green, right? It's mm -hmm. not bad. It's pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. So let's assume you have like two dragon tails or something, right? I don't know, because you took a little bit of chip damage. So as you can see, in this scenario, Frostoss can basically just full farm you down. And they come out with 42 HP and 100 energy. Mm. So it can get really scary. This is what happened to us, actually, in one of the battles last night. The Tyrant was chipped a bit, mm. and Frostoss basically just farmed us down. And, like, it doesn't matter that you're then two shields up, because, like, the... Yeah, exactly. She's probably going to take both of them. You're going to... Okay, maybe you have an Umbreon, and it survives two, yeah. two avalanches, but, like... I don't know. It's really, it's really, uh, you got to be careful. So that's why I, I don't think steel is allowed. Steel is banned. So what else resists ice, right? Um, water. And ice. Wait, how do I do that? Is it and? Or is it uh, this um, symbol? Don't, no space. It's the ampersand, but no space. There we go. But this is water and ice. I don't want to find... I want water oh, plus comma. ice. Okay, there we go. Uh, also, Tyron flips the one shields against Lass with uh, one Dragon Tail of Energy lead. No, Tyron wins the one shield against Lass. But not if it's chipped at all. No, uh, it was saying it was losing before. Hang on. Um, might be a, an IV thing again. Yeah, in mine it's saying it loses. It is... It wins CMP against the Frostlass. Yeah, it's getting to the second fro um, Avalanche before before Tyrant can get to the Ancient Power. It doesn't need the Ancient Power, it just needs a Dragon Claw. Yeah, that's that's got to be an IV thing. Because... Uh, yeah, oh. yeah, Frost, Frostlass, I'm, I'm doing rank 1s, remember? So, here, Frostlass is surviving with 1 HP. Okay. Yeah, I didn't have a rank 1 on for the Tyrant. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Actually, okay. if you... So, I would assume that most people don't have a high rank Tyrant, because yeah. it's kind of hard to get. Like, we were already talking about this last show, right? Mm. Like, our, mine was like 4 or 5 attack. So in that scenario, I think you're pretty safe to assume that the Dragon yeah. Claw would KO. Um, but again, it's very close. And if you throw that... One, two, three, four... I want to see... Two, three, four, five... You do one more and throw. I want to see if they shield this. Yeah, so it says Tyrant wins the two shields, mm. but if Frostoss just shields, double shields, the the Dragon Claws because yeah. of the sneaking um, Powder Snow, yeah. you then they can farm, down. farm down. You're very low, but you have 83 energy, yeah. and um, you have 10 HP. Unless they have like a fast move pressure, like high, like a rock like throw or something, we most likely will. I think you would survive one volt switch. You reckon? How much do you think damage? it does? I, I, th I think it'd faint. Oh, it does 11 damage. Yeah, Ooh. there you go. <laughs> you still get off one avalanche. Yeah, though. yeah. So you take that second shield. Well, you can just always uh, pray. So what you do in that scenario is you throw the avalanche, and then you hope you the game screws your opponent, <laughs> and they don't get their, they don't get their uh, volt switch through, and then you can do one powder snow and throw another volt switch or throw another avalanche. Or you can and like then they can switch out uh, another Pokemon and then bring it in end game when you've burnt their shield. Well, you can't you can't transfer right so. As in well, like, you can transfer in that scenario, probably. But... So, like, if you, if you, um, what was I saying? Um, if you, uh, 
like if you've got a situation where they've got the one shield left, they've got two Pokemon, they try and bring in the Galvantula, you switch to your second Pokemon, try and and they they probably switch themselves, but you try and burn that second shield, and then at that point, uh, Frostlass can come back in, maybe like a snipe situation, and um, like get a chance to throw both avalanches at that point. Mm -hmm. I think you just go for the denial, you know, too. You can try that. <laughs> it happens all the time. So this, this is actually interesting. Something like this. Uh, Caracosta does pretty well against Frostlass, too. Like, it has Water Gun, Surf, Body yeah. Slam. It's interesting. Does, does Rock Throw beat um, Gavantula there? So imagine a water type with Shadow Claw losing the Frost Lash. <laughs> this thing looks great. But look at this. It destroys Chestnut. And it actually does okay enough against Frost Lash. I mean, you were saying you don't like alignment, Pokemon. No, it doesn't seem like it needs alignment. Like, um, Well, it loses to Frost Lash. Yeah, with a bait. Shadow Ball does 72%. Or 72 damage. 67%. If they go straight Shadow Ball, you win. Mm. There you go. See? Doesn't look that bad, actually. Galissapod could be interesting. Because anything that can help break up this, like, Chestnut Frostlass core, and, like, it technically loses to Umbreon, but um, you do at least have x -Scissor. And I think this thing can learn um, Waterfall and Fury Cutter. So... X Scissor does what? Twenty five percent to an Umbreon. So, like, it's not like you can't take out an Umbreon if you need to. Mm. I don't know. That thing actually seems kind of interesting. I might play around with that. Um, the I did just see the Caracosta beats Garbantula when it's running Rock Crow. Um, and it would also be able to beat Frostlass. It's just um, obviously gonna. Have a real hard time against Chestnut. Yeah, very. Yeah, extremely. Pangoro's here. Hey. This is ranked pretty high with Night Slash. Like, you destroy Frostas, Umbreon. Um, there's no Charmers, right? I don't think so. What is it losing to? Mainly Flyers. There's Whimscott, actually, is eligible. Oh, yeah. And Beartick. Hmm. Actually, I kind of like this Pangoro pick, too. Hmm. Wow, look at that. Chestnut Frost last April coverage. Yeah. Uh, Skun Tank that's, is something we haven't looked at yet. And Skun Tank would, you be, should... would have pretty good play against Galv as well. Yeah, technically, though, the thing is, is that Skunk Tank, Frostlass is kind of like awkward matchup. It is. Beca because um, your fast move as Frostlass actually does damage and theirs mm -hmm. is resistant. So technically it's sort of a positive matchup for Frostlass, even though you can deal super effective damage to the Skunk Tank. But I do like Skunk Tank a lot. Um... And uh, the CMP ties are extremely IV dependent. Mm -hmm. And they outpaced to the avalanche as well. They outpaced to the yeah. first one and, and to the second, but they can. We can tank an avalanche, but they can't take a crunch. With the poison, yeah, but they do win. Frostlass wins the two shields. Yeah. Pretty handily. Yeah. It's kind of awkward, right? It's 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 still okay for Skunk Tank, but um, I don't like it so much. Mm. You, need, you need a a very good stat product Skunk Tank to be able to tank an Avalanche. Yeah, exactly. So what's it come saying core breakers for that that core? Of the Chestnut Frostlass, it's these seven picks. And Frostlass so the is one of them, so you can eliminate that. Arkin was actually something I was looking at. But the thing is, it's also a flying type, so it's kind of weird that um, 
flying rock. It is. So it does take super effective. It says it loses to Frostlass. Yeah, I'm not surprised there. But you said it was a core breaker. Oh right. Um well the these takes this takes the average of the zero and ones, so it's probably like losing the zeros and winning the ones or something like that. Why I keep this thing is pissing me off. I have it set to max stat mm. product. Why isn't it coming up that way? I don't understand. Skill issue. Bullshit. <laughs> Yeah, if you have a really good Arkin, you can get to another one. See, like, I just opened it again. How come it's not showing me rank ones? That's so bullshit. weird. Yeah. You need to get to an Ancient Power. It does a lot. It does, like, 80%. Mm. But uh, Powder Snow also does a lot. This thing's very frail, this yeah. Arkin. It's 1423 stat product. Like, As a rank one. It's super fail. Frail. Frail. Um, Honchkrow, interesting. Yeah, Mega, huh? These are flying types with rock type, yeah, fast, with rock type charge moves, right? Mm -hmm. Um, interesting. Uh, the Alolan Muck is interesting. Would you run Snarl there, maybe, for a better Frost last matchup? Or? No, 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 no. You will get clapped by Chestnut with Snarl. Uh, I mean, if you're running Sludge Wave, like you can, you yeah. can take shields. Even even if you do lose that, you can take shields from. Like they have to shield. Whereas you can like think, tank a super. I think out. you. I think you want um, poison jab, but I'm just thinking uh, poison jab. Like if you didn't like Scun Tank because how of how awkward that. You said that I don't like it. I said it's uh, can get tricky the matchup yeah, sure. if you're not careful you know what i'm saying so it, it's not like the umbreon matchup with yeah. frost last where it's just like oh la -di -da. oh i threw on bad timing oh i'm gonna oh i ate an extra avalanche oh whoopsie like you know like that's the umbreon matchup like <laughs> oh my god oh no i got hit by two avalanches oh, poor me let's see if they eat this foul play hey, oh they don't eat it very well this rendition of uh, of low battling Oh, this is me battling goddamn Omron, yeah. you freaking die now. How could they throw this Pokemon in? What are they doing? Um, <laughs> well, my points, I, I, well, I don't know. I'm doing, remember I was talking about Unified? Mm, yes. Last time? Yeah, yeah. We were talking about my team for that? Yeah. Yesterday I battled someone that had a Wobbuffet. Oh, yeah. Counting? How many Hydro Cannons do you think it takes to kill a Wobbuffet from, from, a, uh, from a Swampert? Regular? Yeah. Five. I can't remember if it was four or five. Okay. I literally cannot remember. It was four. Mm. One, two, three, four. Plus the Mud Shots. Yeah, yeah. Watch out, it's doing 1% yeah. 3 damage. I think I had like 2 mud shots. Energy lead? Yeah, it's kind of how it played out. Stupid wall effect. I hope I never had to battle that thing again. It wasn't that necessarily that good. So now that I'm looking at it, I kind of like Pangoro. Mm. Because it says it loses to Chestnut, but I have a feeling Chestnut doesn't want to take a close combat. 68% is not, not as much as you'd want, though. You'd want it to... to Because, like, does, Yo, this does thing a knows nice bullet punch. Creation. This thing knows bullet oh. punch. Could that actually be an option? Still loses. But that's you shielding a Frenzy, which mm. does... 76 percent it's like you you are like one bullet punch away from a close combat mm. with a bait and let's see how the frost last match i mean with yeah punch. but yes you're, you're, you're baiting and you're still losing you'd be frost last really good with bullet punch yeah wouldn't you wouldn't you beat it just as well with snarl 
Yeah. But the bullet punch will give you like potential uh, fast move damage versus a uh, yeah. chestnut, right? Like a bullet punch is doing 4%. So like if it's low enough, you could like shield and farm it down. Yeah. I don't, I don't think it's good with bullet punch, but it's something to consider. Bullet punch is not the worst move in the world. Um, you are beating with snarl, um, snarl sludge wave muck. You're, you're beating chest mode in the zeros and ones, but it looks like you are losing the twos. It takes four mm. superpowers to take you out though, within the two shields. Okay, interesting. So snarl looks not bad. They're recommending poison jab here, but um, yeah, like you said, snarl could be decent. Mm. Hmm. <laughs> Sorry, Gordicom. Uh, it was it's tough doing uh, a weekly GBO breakdown and then also fitting in three sylph metas in that time. So it's okay. Uh, you you know everyone gets clapped week one. We learn a thing or two about the meta. Then for week two, you're ready to roll. Ah, uh, yeah. You know what? We deliberately waited this long so that people would get clapped in their first week, and like it, it increases the need for our for our information. <laughs> so we've already talked pretty heavily about a lot of the picks at the, near the top of the meta here. Um, I'm just like scrolling down to see like if there's anything that jumps out at me currently. Vespa Queen at rank 21 is kind oh, of nice. interesting. Sorry. No, go go. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's good, but it's it will destroy Chestnut, right? It like would. completely ruin it completely ruins Chestnut. Beats Umbreon. It's life. Beats Umbreon. And beat probably Lord. can be probably can beat Frostloss with energy possibly. How much energy? I don't know. How much does a power gem do to Frostloss? It's a pretty bad matchup for it, yeah. but Power Gem only does 61%. Wow, so is that old? <laughs> I mean, it's a bad move, right? Yeah. Hmm. Sea King, again, I think could be interesting. I don't hate Sea King. Um, Lycan Rock, we've already talked about, it seems very mm. interesting. Mm. Because of the psychic fangs, mm. like can really give you play against some stuff. Um, it also does know um, rock throw and crunch, so it can give you some different play mm. depending on what your opponent. Again, you got to keep in mind it's a pretty glassy Pokemon, but so even you... with counter or psychic fangs, it's losing to Lapras and Samurai. Mm. Well, Samurai, yeah, but and with rock throw, you are mm -hmm. you're losing the chestnut matchup. You'd be doing better against Frostlass and Galv. But yeah, this Chestnut. pick seems very interesting, actually. Whimscott. You beat Chestnut, Umbreon, and Galv. You can beat. Which you'd expect. I, yeah, you lose I don't like that it loses to Mandibuzz. Well it's a flying type. I know. But if you're gonna bring a fairy, you, you don't want it to lose to the dark the most popular dark type. Mandibuzz is just so bulky, it can yeah. take a move, right? Yeah. And with Air Slash, it's probably even way worse. I wouldn't say way worse, but yeah. I don't know. Mandibuzz seems a little funny to me, but... Uh, let's see what else we got down here. We already talked about Graveler. It seems mm. not bad, other than the fact that no, it that's just cancer. completely... Whatever. <laughs> this one... You need a legacy mud shot, right? That, that's uh that's an unobtainable move. Mud shot you yeah. can't even get by elite TM. So good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> Some of these picks seem strange, in my opinion. This one I think I've heard people talking about it as being potentially decent. But we did talk about it previously that you needed um, kind of like a very low level 
like yeah. only gets 16 to 19. Yeah. So if you hatch an egg at level 20, it's not going to be um, able to evolve for great yeah. League. Hsuin's who Hsuin Electrode is a pretty good, um, pretty interesting pick, I think. Um, is so, it? Yeah, I um, yeah. So I, I did start saying good. I won't say good, but interesting is it's definitely interesting because like um, I was doing a practice battle like uh representing one of my teammates' opponents, and that opponent had a Hsuin Electrode. And I was like, well, actually, this plays pretty well against everything except your Galvantula. And let me see if I can bring up the teams. So it was... So my teammate's team was Umbreon... Sudowoodo, Frostlass, Barbarical, Mandibuzz, and Galv. So, pretty neutral against Umbreon. Um, I would say pretty good against Sudowoodo, Barbarical, and Mandibuzz. Mm -hmm. And then Frostlass generally favors the last, but um, like you you get through a wild charge, and they're in trouble for sure. Yes. They're in trouble big time. It's, yeah, Frost, it still survives the, Frost, the Wild Charge, though, right? So It does. And they are dealing super effective damage to you, so... These flying bug types are very interesting, actually. Now that I'm looking at this meta. Yen Mega, what's Yen Mega Rig? 64? Uh, wing Attack. It has Wing Ancient Attack. Power. I mean, it has the potential to beat, to break this core. Like, the opponent but we got last week, just though. saying, they beat, they ran every time against us. Chestnut, Umbreon, Frostlass, all three games. Yeah. The same team. So having something that can at least apply pressure to that core is yeah, interesting. Yeah, that, that is cool. And Ancient Power is still does 74% to a okay. to a Galv. And a Wing Attack is doing 5%. So, I mean, it's not unheard of. Heard of. Like you can be the honestly, on. I think um, this looks not bad. In in that sim, were they throwing the ancient power straight away or No, why are they building up a bunch? For timing. Uh, um Wait, is that the answer? Timing? Like why wouldn't you try and throw the first ancient power before Oh you don't get Well they it would throw it on C M P right? Which you don't want to do, you're right. I mean if you if you bank on the opponent Okay, if yeah. you bank on them throwing right away, you could throw it on CMP, I guess, right? Um, which you'd still lose on CMP on the second one. Yeah, so that's, that looks like an awkward matchup. Yeah, but again, at least you don't get walled by it, right? No. Which is nice to know. Yeah. Hold on, I wanna I wanna re sim this. You need the you need the boost to get to another move. Bolt switch does a lot. It does almost twenty mm. percent. Mm. I like it. Maybe I'll do some scrims this week. I'll try to come up with a with another team for Catacomb. What's um what's its stat product? Yen Mega? Yeah. Um Just scroll up. It's a sixteen thirty. Yeah. It's it's a glassier. Yeah. 
but it's not at the level of like Arkin. If I mean, yeah, no, not much is at the level of Arkin. Like, isn't is Haunter even at the level of Arkin? <laughs> no, it's about the same as Haunter. Haunter's in the thirteen hundreds. Um, we have shit IVs of this thing. I guess it's kind of trash, right? Mainly. What is? Yen Mega? Mm. Or Yen Mega or whatever. I, th I, think, I think I've got a pretty good ranked one, actually. It says here I have a good one for Ultra League. Oh, yeah. Uh, I have a rank for Yanma. And Which is requires excels. Yeah. I've also got a rank three yen mega for Ultra League. That's about the same place I'm in. I have a good one for decent one for Ultra League, mm. and I have a good yen ma for Great League. Yeah. Saves. <laughs> but um. Okay, I have a really shitty IV shiny. It's a. 11 10 10 and it gets to 13 26 or i have like a rank 500 non-shiny but it only gets to 14 82 what do you think is better here are the options again like a rank 1300 shiny that's like or a rank 500 non-shiny go the non I don't know if I want to spend dust right on them. What's this one? Get Wuss. No, no. I have a hundo. Same. And I have a shiny 96. Let's go. Look at you. Hmm. And also, okay. like, how popular is Beedrill? I feel like Beedrill might be pretty What guy's popular. bringing Beedrill this week? He seems to like it. I'm thinking, like, Yen, that's another point in Yen Mega's favor. I like the Yen Mega. Mm. I, I, I really do. Yeah. Um. Because it seems like it's... Like, I just want something... Okay, let me look here quickly on my team. Now that we've been playing around... Catacomb. Catacomb. Okay, so if you're running, if you're running in Mega, I think you definitely want um, Umbreon because you need something that can hard beat. Uh, you need something that can hard beat um, Frostlass, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, here, let me go to the team builder here for a second. Bring out okay, the team so we've builder. Okay, we've already discussed that um, the Frostlass and Chestnut is like a pretty solid core, right? Mm -hmm. So then if we add Tyrant, because we need something that can deal with uh, Galv a little better. Coverage A, Bulk D, I mean, it is is what it is sometimes mm -hmm. in Sylph metas, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and when you've got real bulky picks like Mandibuzz and Umbreon around, like anything that's not them will drag your bulk score right down. I do like Samurott a lot, um, minus the Chestnut, but um, so we're losing the Mandibuzz quite a bit right now, according to this. We'll add Umbreon, that'll mm. add some bulk, right? Mm. Yeah, there we hey, go. Look at that. Beep. So what are we losing to? It says a uh, Barbarical mm. gets us pretty good. Skunk Tank. So things that can beat these. Um, jump Luff. Jump Luff. Sea King, look at that. Not if it's running Grass Knot. Who the hell's running Grass Knot? <laughs> okay, let's try adding Sea King. 
Maybe I'll add Sea King instead of Samurott. Yeah, and I don't then I'll add. Um, oh, then I'll try Yen Mega bit, as. Yeah, I was gonna say. Third. You need a bit more against Umbreon if you're taking Samurott out. Still a C for bulk. It's not bad. Still lose the Barbarical, mm. but at least now I have Chestnut and Sea King. And, um... And you got, yeah, like, Tyrant can hang in there. Sea King can obviously... Well, they do have Cross Chop. Yeah, right? yeah. But it but should Umbreon be able to tank a Cross Chop, right? Honchkrow. Took off Honchkrow. How does Yem Mega lose to Umbreon? Just Glass? Yeah, it looks like you're tanking a bug buzz. Yeah, it's all even shields as well, jeez. It's pretty close though. It Gets is. it down to 8 HP. Just chip it. Chip it good. Da -na 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 -na. Let me see that. Where's my tab? Oh my god. Oh my god, I have too many tabs. Okay, what is it saying? Barbarical? Uh, if there is anyone in chat now, I want you to guess how many tabs Lars got open. I can see how many it is. Nobody's here. Nobody knows. Nobody uh, cares. Um, okay, so what I'm people. weak to? So let's see then. Let me put in... Um... I want to put in Galv somewhere here. Okay, fine. This team's fine for now. Um, Galv instead of Seeking? I think you want Seeking, but... Do you? Yeah, Seeking's busted. You can tip your mouth, okay? Let's see here. Yeah, you put Cast it on the, on the team specifically to beat Barbarico, didn't you? Yep. And... Just in general, I think it's nice. I like having the icy w and the dark poisons. Also helps first the poisons because of the drill run. Mm. Yeah, okay. But I, I like this team. I will try this team out. Nobody's here to guess how many tabs I have <laughs> open. Probably like 15. It's high. Something while you're counting? Yeah, I counted them. Keep going. God, am I am I gonna spend a uh, maybe K twenty then? Higher. What? It's higher. No way. Than 20. Have that many. Yeah. Oh, uh, like you know, twenty one. Higher. Okay, let me start deleting some then. No, I was gonna recount them, just to make sure I I wasn't leading you leading you astray. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I counted twenty three. I believe it's five. <laughs> yeah, twenty three tabs open. 15. Close. 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 Yeah. I mean, not really. Okay. Yeah, I will consider something like this. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. At least the Yem Mega is... I don't know. Maybe it's bad, but I'll try it. No, it, it looks good. I, I genuinely want to try it. What level does it need to be at? It's not very high. Yeah. Do I, should I spend 50,000 Stardust double moving a Yem Mega? Right now? I guess. Sure. Do it. Everything else is built. I have a lot of things built for this cup, so. I mean, it's the cheaper option of the Arkin thing. I don't have a good Vespa Queen. Like, I've already looked into that. I think the best one I have... Oh, I have a rank 500 Vespa Queen. Um, yeah. Do you want to do, uh, okay, so we're about done. Do you want to do any practice battles or anything for fun? Oh, I don't know how fun I'll find it. Uh, no, I was going to say, I don't know how fun I'll find it getting smacked around. I thought we were going to do open Great League practice. Open Great League on, a, on our complete Catacomb Cup breakdown. I'm happy to do some offline if you want. Do you want it? Yeah, let's... Oh, yeah. offline? Or... Yeah, oh, sure. Offline, yeah, yeah. Um, 
Let's do another quick sweep. See if there's uh, anything we missed. As the Alolan Grimer. Uh, Sitter Wudo. Uh, what do you think of Sitter Wudo versus Lycanroc? <laughs> yeah, I know. I think, um... Let's see, it looks like the chat is busted. Rip. Is it? Oh, because it's nobody chatting? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, the, what are you saying? Skunk Tank over Grimer? No, is that what you're um... I, I did mention grammar, but um, the, the question is Sudo Wudo against Lycan Rock. So, quick, my quick two thoughts is I just think Skunk Tank is a better grammar sure. because um, number yeah, I, one, I agree with that. it has a flamethrower coverage for other dark poisons, so it, it gives you that added flexibility. I don't think there's any benefit to running grammar over Skunk Tank. Mm. Like they're pretty much a very similar. Pokemon, as you can even see from the from the stat product, right? I was gonna, I was looking at that. Yeah, eighteen twenty versus eighteen nineteen. So it's basically the same Pokemon. One requires XLs. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't see the benefit. Um, really, oh, it's not showing me the charge moves right now. Um. The Sudo Wudo Lycanroc thing is interesting because um, I would say Sudo Wudo is bulkier, right? Mm -hmm. So this one, like 1905 versus like 1600 or whatever. Mm -hmm. So there is quite a bit of a bulk difference there. Um, they both have counter. They both have rock throw. Uh-huh. Lycanroc has Psychic Fangs, which I think is a better charge move yeah. than Rock Slide because of just in terms of speed at getting to the move. Like, but, like imagine with Champ without Cross Chop, something like yeah. that, right? But then uh, the disadvantage of that is that Psychic Fangs is rarely enough to take out a Pokemon on its own, whereas Rock Slide could. Yeah. Also, Sudowoodo has access to Meteor Beam now. Yeah. So if 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 there's ever a scenario where your opponent has Shield, and you you don't think like you're gonna get the, enough Charge moves, you can always buff your attack and then like try to just do fast move damage as well. So I like that as well. Well, it is okay. Um, yeah. For some reason, uh, the YouTube is so delayed over Twitch. It's it's annoying. Because, like, <laughs> I, I prefer viewers being on YouTube over Twitch, to be honest. But it's just such a better user experience on Twitch. Yes, it is. Just give me one second. Okay. Um, the Beedrill pseudo matchup is interesting. I'm just talking to myself. It's alright. No, it's okay. Uh, yeah, I lo always liked Shadow Beedrill, but... Keep in mind these things can also run rock throw, which is also the guessing game yeah. when you're when you're going up against them. It's like, are they running rock throw? Or are they running counter? Right. Uh huh. So like the opponent we battled yesterday, they had actually Sudowoodo and Lycanroc on their team. So it was very in interesting. Um, let's see the blind fit matchup. So this guy's team was Sudo, Chestnut, Frost, like Sudo, Lycan Rock, Umbreon, Chestnut, Frost, Last Skunk Tank. And Blind Flip has the Yellow and Grammar. Which, yeah, yeah I agree. We... Like, there's no reason to run that over Skunk Tank. He didn't have a Skunk Tank. There we go. There's, that's your reason. That was, <laughs> you found a reason. a reason. Um. Like, we kind of wanted to use the Barbarical, but the problem was, is, like, he had the Chestnut and two counter users, mm. right? So, we tried to rely on, like, Grimer a lot, and it, like, didn't really work out for us, because they, like I said, they just ran Frostlass, Chestnut, Umbreon, all three games. Mm -hmm. And we didn't really have, it was just very, like, we were worried about, basically, we brought the Samurai out one time, and it ended up being aligned on the Chestnut. So... Yeah. So rip. Yeah, it was it was rough. Huh. Oh yeah, that makes sense. 
makes sense. So, Beedrill can tank a rock slide from. What's his face? Well, counter Sinner is Wooda. double resisted, right? Keep yeah. in mind. Yeah. It's doing two point. Counter's doing 2.3% damage. Um, so, times 7, you're looking at what? Uh... But pseudo survives the drill run, right? It does, yeah. So Drew Run doing sixty three percent, Rock Slide doing seventy seven. Um, Poison Jabs only single resisted doing three point one percent. So, but Lycan Rock, amount. I'm assuming, a Lycan Rock wouldn't get to a Stone Edge before you got to a Drill Run, and a Psychic Fang surely wouldn't be enough to KO the B Drill. So, a set the second one probably would. But they you would get to a Drill Run before they get to two. It was say uh, if you if if they shield the first one they probably wouldn't shield the first one would they? Beedrill? Um no. They probably wouldn't shield the first psychic fangs. So you would have to get the three. Yeah, yeah. Which is fifteen counters. Yeah. Um It's actually they get the two drill runs in um thirteen poison jabs, right? They so, get the two drill runs. Yeah, yeah. So they would get the two drill runs before you get the three psychic things. Yeah, right. Even if they counter swapped into you. Yeah. So I think it's still okay for B drill. I think. Yeah. But then, like, B-drill how much is the psychic things doing? Because, like, it might even. Yeah, I know it's double resisted, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if you could, like, counter them down after they let through one psychic things. Let's see here. Beedrill loses because you're shielding the first Thank you, Fangs for some reason. Oh, this is the double shield scenario. Uh, let's just say you go just straight Psychic Fangs. You're not building up to a Stone Edge or anything. Wait. I removed the wrong move. Yeah. Exactly. You just let the first one go, right? Mm. And then you get to another drill run. Um, you even win the two shield with with um and if they shield a drill run with the poison jabs, you can basically throw like an X scissor. Because mm. how much does X scissor do? Does about thirty four percent. I don't think you. Yeah, you still win the two shield going straight drill run. But I think it's so like after you throw a second drill run. I think I would still throw the second drill run because the psychic fangs or the the X's are wouldn't KO from this range, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And then if they shield that and you really want to shield again, then you can just throw a. Um, scissor yeah because it does um does 44 damage so like one two yeah right about here you can throw an x scissor so that's um so specifically for the beedrill matchup it sounds like pseudo's got the better of that yeah But Beedrill does win the two shield straight yeah. drill run. Yeah. So Beedrill actually looks not bad against those things. Against both. But again, yeah. all you all you have to do is throw rock throw on this thing. Yeah. And then suddenly, whoops. Man, now I'm looking at my opponent's thing team. Imagine we had Beedrill. Where was it? Like, if we have Beedrill, he probably has to run Rock Throw on mm. one of his Lycan Rocks and bring it on one of his things and bring it, right? Um, because he has Frost Last, but that's mainly it, other than uh, if he's running Rock Throw. This was the meta that I would not shut up about me bring, like, my decision to bring Infestation Beedrill. That was the stupid uh, Glacial Cut. Was that Glacial? I'm, I was sure yeah. it was, um... Because if you look at the meta in Catacomb as well, like, everything is either 
um resisting poison jab or is weak to bug or both no it was it was 100 percent glacial, glacial? Cup. okay I fish believe. on a heater <laughs> self hello internet <laughs> he's got too much on his self card to load Let's go back and check here. Um, oh, you do a lot of self tournaments, Jesus. Not anymore. <laughs> now that they've capped the rounds. Bijo, 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 Bijo. Did I? You ran the same team. Shadow Bijo. infestation. Yep. Yeah, I I always just stick with the same team for every tournament. Once, once I've got one, like I don't want to. I'm not even doing a, I'm not even doing a tournament this month. Mm, yeah. How does that feel? How are you feeling? Feels nice. Mm. I'm still doing the BTW custom meta, which mm. is almost done now. The Meadow Cup, mm -hmm. which you didn't join. Um, yeah, because uh, you know the whole <laughs> death in the family thing. Bro, people die every day. Come on. <laughs> Um, and I'm doing unified. It's a risky right? joke so to make, Lyle. Well, it's it's not a joke. It's a it's a statement. Yeah, yeah, go, go on, mate. <laughs> um, I'm doing factions and right, which is takes up a lot of time. So I think basically I'm just devoting more. I'm I'm focusing my. It's not that I'm like really like taking a break. I'm just like trying to focus. Mm my time on things that I care about so that I have more time when I'm not doing that to do other stuff with like friends and family. So yeah, that's mainly my approach. Um, and I care more about factions than I do about individual self. Sure. Because like at the end of the day, it's kind of a pain to coordinate with people and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. So Hey, yep. agent Cortez with the raid. Whoa! Hello, big raid. That means we have to do uh, we have to do a quick battle. Yeah, no, it means we have to start again. We have to explain everything we've just covered. Oh god. <laughs> uh, we we have been breaking down the catacomb cup for silk factions. Uh, shout out agent Cortez from Guam. I remember this time. How was your stream? Hmm. Okay. Uh, but also, yeah, uh, we we have also kind of gotten to the end. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I got it. Um, let's see. The the we haven't looked at Quillfish yet. Ariados. Um, Ariados, I don't think is looking particularly good. Stream was fun, but battles weren't so not so good. Oh no, Psychic Couple. Okay, the... Yep. Go. On. Oh, what is he saying? Uh, battles are... Battle oh, well, I'm great. sorry to hear that for you. Um, Ariados does really well against Galv and Chestnut, so that is something to consider. But then pretty um, bad against Frostlass. Yeah. yeah. And maybe... It is, everything is resistant. You do have Shadow Sneak. There you go. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't think it's... I, I mean... It's, it's, it was so enough to take my picks, I don't. I don't know necessarily if I would run it every game. But it's it's a very nice roster filler because okay. it really can it can really these types of things can really help um, designate like not designate but like push your opponent into running specific lines in Pokemon right mm -hmm. like if you have like if it's so strong against Chestnut Galv like they're probably not gonna run like a ABA Chestnut Galv team against you no. right so. It, you, like you could say like oh maybe they're gonna run like Frostlass, Galv to bait at the Aridos and like Chestnut in the back mm -hmm. maybe possibly something like that right because these are three very common Pokemon so um yeah Lapras we didn't talk about much but it it has a very good matchup against Frostlass there's, there's actually a lot and... of Pokemon we haven't talked about yet to be honest well, there's a it's a pretty wide meta, so we try our best. 
you know you know what I'm noticing? Our process seems to be um establish the core meta, work out how yeah, to break about... the core meta, and then uh talk about like wild fringe picks that could make a difference here or there. I think that's basically how it's I team build. Mm. Yeah. But I do like Lapras a lot. Like the only really problem is the rock types, but you do have surf. I think the main problem would be something like um this is where uh Barbarical would come into play. Mm -hmm. Like that would be a very tough matchup for Frost Last, right? It's not listing Lapras. it as key losses for last mm -hmm. yeah, Lapras, because everything is you only have neutral surf. Mm. So but I do like it quite a bit now that I'm looking at it. And I guess the ice shards aren't doing nothing against a chestnut. Would you run ice beam as a second move? You probably want skull bash just for other ice safe, but it it also depends on what your that's the beauty of factions is that you can tailor your loose set based on your opponent's yeah. line, right? Yeah. But how, how many I other ice say... are there though? Like there's frost last obviously, but your surf is fine there. Um, there's Frostlass. Well, you also have something like Samurai, right? Yeah, like water types in general. That. Yeah. Um, I mean, you don't necessarily. You can like um, Avalog, I guess, is an ice type. Basically, so, any other water. So it's, a, it's another give and take thing. Like, yeah, you're you're making your matchups against water types a lot harder, but you're able to hit Mana Buzz. And what was the other thing? Mendibuzz and and Chestnut. I do like my low deck too. So it actually can be Barbarical here. Frostlass, Samurai. Um, and you do have Dragon Tail, which is at least neutral against Chestnut. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of good picks here. You can really come up with a very interesting team. And I might try to build one other team that's um, a little more varied with my with my team comps, just to try to change it up a bit. Okay, Ionic. I can delete that, right? Ionic Perfect. what? Ionic... Team. Yeah. <laughs> See you later, Ionic. Beware, um, I only knew you briefly. Uh, okay, hang on. I think... Uh, maybe I know what's happening. I think, um on youtube like it might be like if you go away from the page and then go back into it it might be playing from a certain spot if you like drag the slider over to the current time then that but uh cars is not going to see this for <laughs> a long time <laughs> um anyway uh um would how does my lot it compare to tyrantrum uh not tyrant uh tyrant Pardon? How does my lot of compare to Tyrant? Order? Um, obviously um, your Galb matchups are a lot worse. Galb matchups worse, but you're you have a slightly better um frost last matchup since you're not taking yeah. super effective from ice. Um, you would also have a better matchup with like Barbarical since you're not taking super effective from fighting. Mm -hmm. So there is definitely pros and cons. I think they're both pretty good, but um, Let's bring them both. You could. It's feasible. It's viable. Workable. What does what does well against the rock types in this meta? I guess basically just chestnut, right? If they're running oh, like and, a and melodic, I guess. Um, and samurai. Right. Yeah, just all your waters, grasses and waters. Okay. okay, I'm gonna write a message to Kaza to Cubone because he's now trying to guess how many tabs you've got open. <laughs> oh my god, dude! Oh my god, he is like literally like 45 minutes behind us right now. That is hilarious.
There we go. <laughs> Um, look further down, look further down, we've got, uh, we did talk a little about Sableye, but Sableye seems, uh, Sableye would be so much nicer if Umbreon and Mandibuzz weren't so prominent. And, well, actually, like, all of the other darks, like Skuntank, it's not great for Skuntank. Mm-hmm. I but mean, it's, it's only neutral it. there, right? So, I mean, the uh, the Skun Tank Sableye matchup mm -hmm. is is better for Skun Tank, isn't it? It Skun Tank Sableye, um, yeah. It is better for Skunk Tank, but you also resist uh, poison. Mm. And, like, it's kind of bait dependent because they have, like, a return does a lot to it that does. thing. So. I would say it's, like, sort of a baity thing. Is there a fire in this meta? Wait. There's very little Skunk fire, Tank right? Flamethrower. Hesuian Arcanine. Okay, very little fire. Houndoom. Incineroar would be actually very nice for this team. Okay, I built another team that has... Uh... Mana Buzz might be annoying for this team. Hmm. Okay. Incineroar. I don't know about that, but... Frostlass tick. Mandibuzz tick. Beats Lapras. Beats Lapras. Uh, does lose to Umbreon. But it's close. How does the Galvantula matchup work? Actually, yeah, Incineroar's tankier than I thought. 1806 stat product? I refuse to evolve one until it gets a uh, flame a blast, uh, burn. blast burn, yeah. Just like Chestnut. Now I can use Chestnut, because it has Frenzy Plant. Mm, yeah, that's not looking like a good matchup against Gav. Uh, you are winning the zeros. Because you managed to survive a discharge. That is with double. Can, it also runs um, Fire Fang or Snarl. I was thinking Snarl, yeah. Uh, you are pretty late, yeah, Captain Lemon. We're not continuing on your account. I'm sorry. We're we're down to Incineroar. Yeah, we're basically done. <laughs> we're just looking at some fire types. Okay, so Incineroar is winning all even shields. Houndoom, okay. Does Firefire and Houndoom beat Umbreon? I doubt it. Wow. This thing's so bad. Oof. Uh, Incineroar versus uh, Chestnut. Chestnut can survive a flame charge. But Incineroar can't survive a superpower. Flame Charge is like not the most amazing move, right? Yeah. It's good on Talonflame because of mainly because of the Incinerates. Mm. And the break I think the Flame Charge Brave Bird combo is like kind of busted, it's beautiful. right? Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
think like don't know if there's too much else we should we can yeah. talk about here. All right, but... I reckon we can cut it there. Twelve thirty a.m. for me. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go shortly because uh, my girlfriend's up now and I have to help her with breakfast so I don't get in trouble. Your on, uh, uh, camera bit just cut out. So you're like you're Should gone. It? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're oh. legit gone. Oh, I might have closed the wrong tab by accident. <laughs> um, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, we you can, can hear you still. Me. Yeah. So. Well, sorry. Uh, yeah, I closed the wrong tab accidentally. That's my fault. So the um, uh, Utrecht uh, regional championship is happening at the moment. So I might just uh, raid us all into that, shall we? Is. Sure. I guess we're the only other stream going, so we have 40 people watching. Wow. It's a big audience. We had a... Uh, we had nice raids, is so. also streaming. And also... Goji. Um, oh, jeez. I feel so bad. I'm not following any of these people. Oh, man. You should be. Who have we got? Well, we got so, to... This guy's streaming Galarian Pro Day. Oh yeah, yeah uh, Cicatrix. Yeah, it's up to you. So no, we'll uh, we'll raid uh, Nuraka. We got uh, Normal Hein versus Ripper Lee. Well, uh, Ripper, to those Ripper Lee's got a Lickitung. Worked okay for I Arrow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I kept Caliper on the normal Hein side. Jeez. <laughs> I like Caliper, but the Lantern and Registeel is like kind of scary, but other mm. than that. Mm. Um, no more Hind one. Okay. Alright, let's raid it. Thanks well, for, thank you so much for stopping in. in. Yeah, good luck with your Catacomb Cup battles, everyone. Uh, check us out uh, tomorrow night. I'll be streaming. I'll be trying my, uh, my team that I rose 130 points with tonight. You'll have to tune in to see what it is. It's got surf. <laughs> no! I'm actually running uh, Hex Chatterball Sludge Wave. <laughs>